Hello and welcome to the big picture. Every four years, the entire world gets engrossed on one election which is unparalleled its glitz, glamour and rigour. The US presidential elections, probably the costliest fought anywhere, is a continuous television event and the most keenly watched simply because whoever gets elected will virtually be the most powerful man in the world. With US President Barack Obama accepting a democratic renomination to fight for a second term this morning, the US presidential race has begun in right earnest. Last week, Mitt Romney accepted his nomination as the Republican candidate. With less than 60 days to go for the polling on November 6th, the race will hot up in the coming weeks as the two candidates barnstorm the country and present their cases before the American people. It is said that Barack Obama is facing probably the toughest ever test a sitting US president has faced while fighting for a second term with the economy in doldrums. The Democratic Convention in the last three days has seen some stellar performance by Michelle Obama, Barack Obama himself and the best of them all, former President Bill Clinton. Mitt Romney's speech at Tampa, Florida is seen as just a patch on what was witnessed in the Democrats' convention. Today, we will discuss the prospects of the two candidates, the election campaign style and the issues involved in the US presidential race and what we can expect in the run-up to the polls. To discuss this, I have with me former Indian Ambassador to the United States, Ronan Sain, Dr. A.R.M. Salim Kidwai, Associate Professor in the Center for US, Canadian and Latin American Studies in the JNU, Dilip Cherian, an image consultant and founder of Perfect Relations, and also on the phone line from Washington, D.C. is Chidanand Rajgatta, foreign editor and the U.S. correspondent of the Times of India. Welcome to all of you. Uh, first, let me go to the man on the spot. Uh, Chidanand, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Hi, good evening. Hi. Uh, Chidanand, the last two, two or three days, uh, what happened in Charlotte, you think that has put... Barack Obama back in the race? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, it has uh, energized uh, the party. Um, I think uh, the Democrats presented a very uh, coherent uh, image and a coherent message. Um, of course, uh, as you mentioned, uh, the highlight of the convention really was uh, the speech by uh, Michelle Obama and uh, uh, Bill Clinton on right. the first two days. In a sense, uh, to use cricketing terminology, which um, you know your viewers are probably very familiar with, uh, Michelle Obama and Bill Clinton uh, opened the innings for uh, Obama, and by the time Obama went out of bat, the wicket had eased uh, last night. Right. Um, they made a very compelling case uh, for an Obama second term, and Obama himself made a very lawyerly case. And basically, his message was uh, that, look, my job is unfinished. Um, and uh, one, the economy is turning around, and uh, definitely there are distinct uh, signs, particularly on the housing front, that things are starting to improve. Um, there are also additional jobs being uh, created. Uh, so th there, is a, there is a sense that the economy is turning around, and so the case he made that he needs four more years was uh, fairly persuasive. Uh, add to this, of course, was uh, the Republican convention in uh, Tampa didn't really... Um, you know, set uh, the mood on fire among their party caters. There were some signs of uh, dissension. Um, so, all in all, the Democrats uh, seem to be uh, having their nose ahead. Of course, there's still 60 days to go for the election, and there'll Absolutely. be plenty of messaging. Uh, we can expect both of their both candidates will now hit the road, and there'll be a, uh, an avalanche of television ads uh, till they meet. Um, for, they'll meet again in uh, Denver for the presidential debate. But for now, it seems that the Democrats um, seem better organized and put out a more uh, coherent and uh, united image 
um, from their convention. Okay. Uh, it also helped that uh, they were batting second, uh, uh, and so they, yeah. they knew what their target was, they knew what their messaging was. Right. Um, but uh, I'd certainly say that uh, Democrats uh, have their nose ahead. Okay. Chidanand, please stay back. I'll come back to you. Uh, Ambassador Sain, we are told that Barack Obama, the unemployment rate in, in, in the United States at this point of time, despite the addition of jobs, as Chidanand uh, was pointing out, is, is the highest for any you know, sitting president before when he goes in for a second term uh, you know, campaign. You think he will be able to overcome all these odds because the, the, he has one of the lowest ratings? Well, the, the task before him was absolutely, I mean, uh, stupendous. And uh, right from the time of the elections, I was present in 2004 for the conventions as well as in 2008. The task before him was very frankly, you know, the burden of uh, very high expectations, perhaps unrealistic expectations. But, you know, the task at that time, in the end of 2008, uh, you faced also an unprecedented crisis, economic crisis. Right. So... On the verge of a depression. It, it was on... In fact, it was being compared to the Great Depression. Great Depression. And it, had a, it was not just a, a subprime crisis. It right. was across the board. Uh, and uh, and it led to uh, basically it's a, it was a global crisis which emanated from the United States, but it was a very very uphill task. And so, but the expectations of you know uh, that he'll wave his wand and there'll be immediate change and a transformation that was the burden which he carried. But uh, uh, but uh, as Chidanand has pointed out, they have made a a case uh, and uh, the. It will be, I expect, a closely fought uh, uh, election. Um, the stakes are high, but uh, both uh, uh, in uh, uh, and the issues will be largely focused on the economy. Economy, uh, domestic issues, not exclusively on the economy, but largely on the economy. Uh, but there are other domestic issues also. And largely also not just on the economy, but on the role of the state in the economy, with the Republicans wanting a minimal government. Absolutely. And the uh, Democrats wanting a more uh, responsive and a more a restructured government, which would be more effective in meeting the aspirations of the people. But as you said, 60 days to go, we'll have to watch the employment figures or, and, you know, if there's some untoward, uh, you know, incident. Uh, incident or something like that, but uh, but it's it's going to be you know closer to the date we'll see the, it's the beginning of a, a debate actually. Professor Kidwai, American elections are all about battle of ideas, right? What are these big ideas that the president that the Republican Party has, which can you know create problems for Obama? Uh, to me, the Republican Party has uh, no such ideas which uh, could pose a uh, challenge to Obama. Of course, they are going to take advantage of the present uh, economic situation, right. very bad situation. But for, who was responsible for that? When Obama took over, it was the mess created by Republicans. Right. And as rightly pointed out by Mr. Ronan Sain, uh, it was a, an uphill task. And to me, uh, as a dispassionate observer of the American scene, I feel convinced that Obama, in spite of all heavy odds, did remarkably well. Compare conditions in America, uh, United States with other European countries. I think uh, American uh, U.S. under the leadership of Obama has has done fairly well. So uh, it is your uh, your question that what are the ideas? I don't see any. You ideas. don't see any big ideas. Big ideas. Okay, okay. Dilip. Dilip, you know. One of the fascinating things about American elections, especially the presidential election, is the way 
it is projected. The way, I mean, you know, it's, it's a huge event, it's a huge television event. We never see these kind of things in any other country. India may be very far behind that, but do you think, I want, to do, I want you to do a comparison of an Indian election and, and the US presidential election. You know, for a start, I think the way the U.S. election is structured, it over the years has got structured uh, to include much more drama right. and much more play for formal, um, you know, uh, formal expositions, as it were, on television. It's right. almost like um, uh, a soap in the way the way it is scripted. You right. know, it goes step by step, including the debates that will happen. And each of them are created and uh, crafted both in terms of viewership timing as well as the amount that it's played out on. That's one. The second is that unlike in India, over the last several elections in America, uh, the place for candidates to actually go out and meet individual voters is, is there, but it's not in the same manner that the it's India... It's not as important. It's not as important. That is also changing in India at the moment, by the right. way. Uh, if you look at the UP elections last time, uh, the, big, the big players in the elections did all their campaigning well before elections were announced. Right. And then you, you pull back and you go into mass media activity. What has happened in the US is that the mass media activity is very substantial. And the new factor which you will have noticed and which we cannot get away from is even television has been taken over by social media. Right. So today, if uh, Obama is going to run probably the first billion dollar campaign in America, a lot of the funding is coming from individuals on Facebook who are actually donating. Right. So the ability to get a, a mass movement, besides of course the PACs and all of those who are big players as far as the money is concerned, but the creation of drama and the ability to play it out in the public domain as it were, is virtually scripted for between television and social media. Good. Absolutely. Chidanan? Chidanan, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay. Chidanan, you know, this this whole, as as uh, Dilip was pointing out, you know, this drama, which is which is so well scripted. And, you know, what we see, do like, like for instance, what we saw in uh, Charlotte yesterday and Tampa the other day, how much of it is orchestrated? Or how much and how much of it is spontaneous? Oh, it's completely orchestrated. Uh, Dilip uh, is right. Uh, you know, this is a made-for-television spectacle. In fact, American elections are made-for-television spectacle. Uh, and uh, I've now covered uh, four or five elections uh, uh, over the last uh, 18 years. Right. Um, and there's a huge difference between the way uh, we do it in India and what happens here. And party conventions in particular, I mean, this is, this is for the faithful, uh, you know, in essence, uh, Obama and Romney are uh, preaching to the choir uh, uh, at the convention itself. Right. Uh, the, the, the delegates you see, you know, the foot stomping party uh, workers, I mean, they are, uh, they are already on board. Right. And so a lot of the messages are actually meant, uh, you know, uh, for television, they put out on television. Uh, I have to tell you, I went to Tampa, um, and I actually, uh, uh, I didn't go to Charlotte. Mm. I, I actually prefer to look at Charlotte um, from the outside, from Washington, because right. what really happens is um, at the convention, there are, uh, there are 15,000 journalists okay. uh, and only 5,000 uh, delegates. <laughs> so basically, journalists outnumber delegates by three to one, and the others, you know, <laughs> the ridiculous situation of journalists actually just talking to each other, uh, and you really don't get an outside perspective. So I actually, uh, you know, prefer to go to local um, party meetings here and watching it on television to get a better sense, uh, because you get a better mix here. Right. So yes, and then of course everything the, the, on the floor itself, everything is choreographed down to the last uh, detail, uh, and everything is vetted. And when they don't do that, <laughs> as it happened at the Republican convention, you have that Clint Eastwood situation <laughs> where he came on board. He wasn't vetted, and he made a really r rambling, bizarre. How speech. did how did uh, the empty chair land up there? <laughs> well, apparently he asked for an empty chair <laughs> just before he went on stage, and uh, nobody realized that he was going to pull off this trick of talking to an empty chair. They thought he was going to sit on the chair or something. <laughs> 
so yeah, that was an unscripted moment. Um, but the Democrats, uh, you know, controlled it very tightly. Every speech was vetted. Uh, and they, they all, you know, um, played a particular role. You know, Michelle Obama's uh, speech was um, specifically meant to hit, you know, the personal button to, pu- to pull out the, you know, the, the human side of Obama. Right. Uh, Clinton, I mean, they used Clinton brilliantly because, uh, you know, Clinton is, is a explainer in chief, as they Absolutely. call him, he's a connector yes. in chief. His ability to, you know, really uh, hit the buttons uh, with, with uh, party cater is unique. Uh, and he is also now a, an, an elder statesman of the party. He, yes. he, he looks and sounds he looks, distinguished. He looks him. like no an idea. elder statesman now. <laughs> Yeah. And and and, and uh, so Chidanand, I want to, I want to get in one more uh, issue, you know, which is very, which doesn't happen in Indian elections, which is the way the family is, you know, portrayed in in these elections. The way the candidates bring their family together, they are always around. The wife is around. They try to bring the kids also around. You know, why is this so much focus? on the family in these elections and why don't we see this happening in, in India? You know, the, I don't know, is it is it possible for a single man to uh, contest an election in, in, um, in America for the president's election? <laughs> that would be very difficult and you're <laughs> so right, that's a very it's a wonderful observation. Uh, Americans really like to, American candidates like to pull out their family because they, they are appealing to families, uh, you know, that uh, they, they are seeking family votes. But we, but we um, thought, uh, but we thought in right, you know, in India, in India, in Chidu, India right, in, we are told that in India, family matters, mm-hmm. but it, you know, and in America, we don't, you know, the whole stereotype is a completely different stereotype, but then when we see <laughs> the elections, it's completely the opposite. Yeah, you're right. You know, it, it, it reminds me where we actually, I don't think we even knew the wives of uh, Prime Minister Chandrasekhar and Prime Absolutely. Minister David they, they, they were never <laughs> on the scene. But and we had a bachelor here, prime it, minister. It's very obvious. Yeah, here it's very obvious. It's very, uh, you know, family, children, wife, and, the, uh, you know, the first lady is now an important part of this whole uh, choreography. Um, so it's, 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 there's a lot of uh, family appeal. Um, and even in terms of issues, you look at you look at um, uh, Obama's speech and Clinton's speech. So much of it was policy. They actually Absolutely. spoke about education and healthcare right. in such detail. Right. And actually, after listening to the two speeches yesterday, I went back and looked at our Prime Minister's speech on Teachers' Day uh, <laughs> a few days back, and I mean, it it was so trite. It was so banal. Absolutely. You know, the, the, uh, American uh, leaders like to throw up. Uh, examples, anecdotes, uh, you know, they, they humanize policy. Absolutely. Um, Obama will talk about, you know, the situation he has at home, over the kitchen table, the, the, it's the so way utter, he it's so know, utter, interacts with his children. Right, right. Uh, okay. Chidu, uh, uh, our, our politics, our politics is very depersonalized. And I, I can't, I look back, I, I go and read every speech on the, you know, Prime Minister's website. It, they are just so incredibly boring and trite. Absolutely, absolutely. Chidu, please stay back. I'll come back to you. Uh, uh, Mr. Rollins saying, mm-hmm. this is one of the things. It is so autobiographical. The, the campaigns in U.S. president's election is so autobiographical. We don't see that happening in India. How do you, I mean, how do you explain this? Well, this has evolved also. And, and, and as Chidu, mm-hmm. Chidananda was pointing out, their speeches is an education. If I'll sit and listen to 50 minutes of Clinton, or 45 minutes of Barack Obama, it's an education. It doesn't happen here. Well, it's evolved over a period of time. You know, earlier it was a radio which was a medium. Right. And, you know, you, a lot of Americans didn't know also that, you know, whether Franklin, uh, uh, FDR Franklin Roosevelt was sitting in a wheelchair. Or, right. You know, his gestures. The, now the medium has changed to television. Right. And if you really look at it in some other elections in Europe, uh, I was in Germany or it was in the United Kingdom also where I attended some conventions of the Labour Party and the Conservative Party and so on and so forth. But there also television has much bigger role because earlier debates which would have been won on the radio right. would be lost on television. On television. So, so they are conscious of it. But at the same time, I'll add to, you know, what, uh, you know, Chidanan uh, observed, and it's a very perceptive observation, is that people want, you know, actually to know the person as a whole, because 
not only you know one is a substance that means you have to take it seriously right so it is scripted but scripted is not necessarily an adverse comment right that means you care about what every you word you say so you, they, they prepare it very thoroughly and there is substance in it and there is substance in even in uh, achievements you know you're talking of the economy actually obama did a lot in terms of right. schooling in particular the school education but clinton's as as chidanand was pointing out the explainer in chief the yes. the way clinton explained all those things i don't think even barack obama could have done better than that well you know they have different roles but you know he is he is very good you know and all these people they rehearse their speeches right the, it it comes out several times and they say look you drop that okay. some advisor will say drop that you know it doesn't come out well you know it just so you know it is rehearsed it's taken seriously so it's a positive element second thing is that you want to know even compared to you know the family or the right. background even in let's say jfk's time john f kennedy's time or even earlier people did not go into family details of course you had you know i mean uh, jacqueline was a great uh, jack of course it was a different way but you had other people also first ladies who played an important role but they were not central in the sense now Absolutely. people want to know who they are the person they are going to elect so right. the family counts for that because the different aspects of person and she plays she plays a pl- pretty significant role also. right no but you also want to bring out you know and the other aspects there can be nothing from the glare of the media is it is so it is in a way intrusive right you cannot hide anything right okay so, dilip so that dilip, is important uh, you know i want you to also talk about it family in campaigns you know in the in indian elections some some of them do but you know we do, we don't expect that. the the voters don't expect that at the risk of sounding facetious i must say that in india as far as politics is concerned the family is most involved in the loot <laughs> meaning as the cold gate scandal is showing us meaning every every person who's been caught has family members right. who are involved so uh, chidanand is right the family matters in india but in matters in a different different way, way. and we keep talking about it the, the other point is that this well roundedness appeal is also i think uh, something that america has as ambassador sen has said evolved to this uh, we are still pretty much um, and shamefully so a paternalistic society right. and it's only the person who uh, who is standing who's there his spouse is usually his in this case spouse is unimportant but where the women stand also it's it's just the, no, it's it's just is, that person you know i was so, just i was just counting today we have at least half a dozen single persons who are chief ministers in this country correct okay and families don't matter no <laughs> well that in some senses is uh, specific to india yes. you know their their kind of uh, particular situation but also the ones who do have families manage to hide them away hide. till till the scandal throws it all <laughs> open <laughs> absolutely yes uh, professor kidwai now coming to the uh, the, the issue of economy then the economy is going to be the main major factor but again how do they explain economy how do they explain the problems of the economy as compared to what happens in india in indian elections no issues issues don't really uh, you know count or even if it counts it doesn't get highlighted it's more personalized to to my, my my kind of situation right right yeah uh, in us economic uh, uh, issues are i think the are the most important as at least so far as this election is concerned and uh, here the um, uh, question of uh, unemployment for example about which you mentioned earlier, unemployment healthcare uh, is another major issue is again very important healthcare uh, education you know all these things so uh, as uh, uh, is uh, evident from the speeches of uh, candidates particularly uh, clinton and obama uh, in particular i believe that uh, the focus is on all these issues and uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the the emphasis is on the fact that uh, four years is a short period absolutely it's not that enough is, yeah, that, that that is that is the message which they were trying to send yesterday uh, chidanand 
you know yes. when, when, now let's 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 come to romney what you know what is what is his usp is he is he seen as somebody as what let us say in a, when when uh, the second bush first contested the elections is he comparable to him in terms of his popularity or in terms of his understanding or do you think he's different no he's totally different uh, uh, you know uh, his his usp uh, if I'm, if i'm not sure you can even call it as usp he he has a, a success a track record as a successful businessman right uh, somebody who strongly backs um, private enterprise and um, you know individual enterprise Uh, but i think the biggest thing go- going for him till now is the enormous sense of disappointment with uh, president obama right. um, you know uh, in fact even the democrats are disappointed with him and in a way as as ambassador sam said it's because there was such high expectation when obama came to office right. you know i was in denver in 2008 at the convention and i can tell you it was probably the only time i felt you know a, an electric atmosphere of the kind you you get in indian elections and you know what we call the wave or the leher uh, which you have in india which you never have in the us but and in 2008 was, it was a wave and the emotional and the, and the emotional and the emotions were high very much and so there was such high expectations when obama came to office but he was also handed the whole such a mess um and so there is a huge sense of disappointment and uh, at least till this week it was you know playing into uh, romney's campaign they took complete advantage of that right but i think the last 3 days uh, the democrats might have managed to pull back and essentially the message uh, that obama gave uh, in charlotte um, you know backed by uh, clinton and uh, michelle obama is it's a unfinished job uh, it's not over yet we need four more years um Romney on the, on the other hand um is is his whole appeal is that government intervention doesn't work private enterprise works so this right. is a test case um we have to remember um, though that the american electoral election system it's a very complicated system and to simplify it let me just tell you uh, viewers that basically um about 40 states out of uh, you know the, the 50 states uh, it, it's already predetermined the either mm-hmm. a uh, heavily pro democrat or heavily, you know pro republican yeah. right and there's only 10 states where it's it's a toss up situation and some okay. of these states uh, like ohio and michigan uh, are where um, you know the 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 whole economic philosophy is being tested right um, for instance in michigan which has a very strong uh, base in automotive um and uh, you know uh, automotive manufacturing right. uh, obama has um, made a compelling case that his intervention resulted in saving um you know general motors and other uh, right. auto- automobile manufacturers and uh, their subsidiaries and created a lot of new jobs and that in inqu- uh, involved government intervention um wh- whereas the, Ob- the romney solution would have been to pull uh, government out of it and let the auto companies go back absolutely so Chibar- Obama made a very compelling case okay jivanand we are uh, we are states like that okay jivanand we are running out of time anyway uh, uh, mr rawlin sen we are completely running out of time is this election about the uh, a battle between new capitalism and the old capitalism there is a lot of discussion debate going on around the world whether the old capital the typical american capitalism is over no 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 i don't think so at all uh, you know it is not is america it's, it's, barack obama's capitalism and mitt romney's capitalism is it is it going to be a battle battle uh, there are differences but it's on the role of the government essentially right because uh, it is not that the democratic party is uh, against uh, capitalism right it is on exactly what the role of the state should be or whether it should be you know it is versus individual you know as uh, chidanand rightly pointed out individual enterprise versus Uh, a collective endeavor collective, yes but the goals have not changed it's a market, both are committed to a market economy in fact traditionally what kind of a market economy what you know start and how much government should be yeah, the one is on the role of the governments whether you should get the governments of the backs of the people as uh, as the uh, republicans would say uh, to let free enterprise work and the other would say that look there is nothing i mean for instance a lot of uh, what we are discussing today like the spectrum is f- provided free absolutely you know sir uh, we are we are completely sorry we are completely run out of time uh, 
this debate will continue. We have 60 days more to go. We will keep a close watch and we'll keep coming back and observing and discussing the American elections till November 6th. Please keep watching till then. Uh, and um, let me thank all my guests. Chidanand Rajgita, thank you very much for coming for coming on this show from Washington, D.C. Uh, Ambassador Ronan Sen, uh, Salim Kidwai and uh, Dilip Cherian. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture, same time on Monday.